In this tutorial, we're going to look at the toolpath tiling feature, which is used when the size of the part that you want to create exceeds the workable area of your CNC. In this demonstration, we'll be showing you the feed through option where one of the axes exceeds the workable area. So let's go to file, close. Okay, so let's open an existing file. So from your project folder, you're going to open the toolpath tiling 3d.crv file. Okay, so here we have a mantelpiece and the dimensions that we're working with is 72 inches wide, 9 inches high, and we're working with a depth of 1.5 inches. Now my desktop machine has a workable area of 24 inches by 24 inches, so the height at 9 inches is actually okay. However, we are going to struggle with the width, which is where we're going to look at using the toolpath tiling feature for the feed through option. So let's just go ahead and switch over to the toolpath tab. We'll tile our windows horizontally. We'll go into the toolpath preview and we're just going to preview all of the toolpaths so we can see how our part is going to look. So at the moment it's simulating the 3D roughing where we're going to use a larger tool to hog away at the majority of the material, followed by a 3D finish toolpath which uses a much finer tool or a much smaller tool to get in at all of the fine detail that you're beginning to see in this simulation within our toolpath preview. Okay, so this is what our part would look like if we were to cut it all in one operation at 72 inches wide. Uh, but we want to tile our toolpath into smaller chunks so it'll fit through uh, my machine. So to do that, let's just close out of the preview toolpath form. And to access the toolpath tiling feature, we use this icon here. And when we click on that, that will open up the toolpath tiling manager. Okay, so you can see it's just a window. We've got a few options in here to create our tiles. I can move this around and I can also still interact with the rest of the software whilst the tiling manager is open. For example, I can switch on the visibility of our toolpaths uh, and still be able to see the toolpath tiling manager. And so nothing will happen until we use this option to tile our toolpaths. So let's check that option and then you'll see that we now have access to various areas in the form enabling us to control the tiles that we want to create. Now in a previous tutorial we covered the individual tiles option where we want to cut a project larger than our workable area in both the X and the Y axis. Here we're focusing on the bottom two options, the feed through in X, the feed through in Y, where in this particular example we're actually going to look at feeding through in the X axis. So we'll just select this option here. Okay, so using the feed through in X, uh, we need to assign a tile width. Now, as I mentioned, my machine's workable area is 24 inches by 24 inches. So we need to change the tile width from 72, where it's took that value from the size of our part, and we're going to change that so it'll fit in within our machine. So we're going to put in 24 in there, and then use this option here to update the tiles. So the tiling manager has now split up our part into three tiles. You can see over here we've got the red T1. This is telling us that this is the active tile. We can see the preview um, for that tile here in the 3D view. And if you look at the bottom of the form we can see that the active tile is set to tile T1. We can change that to tile 2. Okay, and that will update in the 3D view, the section of tile for the second part. You can see that it is highlighted here in red, T2 for that tile. And then we can also go to tile 3 and that will make the third tile the active tile in the 2D and the 3D view. Not only can we access the tiles using this drop down menu, but we can also click in the 2D view, double click in and each part will just activate uh, that particular tile. 
So now let's demonstrate the actual toolpath previews for each of the tiles that we'll be feeding through in X to get a better understanding of how toolpath tiling works. So let's just take that manager, we're just going to move that up just so we can see everything in the 3D view. We're going to go to our toolpath preview and we're just going to reset that preview. And then we'll go to the active tile, we'll make tile one the active tile. Okay, we'll just put this in the ISO view like so. And then we're just going to go ahead and preview all the toolpaths for tile one. So it's going to apply the roughing toolpath first, followed by the 3D finishing toolpath. Okay, so that's our first tile done. So at this stage, once that's complete, we will then feed through the plank of wood through the machine, and then we'd reset our X0, Y0, so that it is here, and then we'd run the second file. So we'll go to tile two, like so, preview all the toolpaths for the second tile. Again, it'll go through the roughing, followed by the finishing to create the second part of our mantel piece. And then once that's complete, again, we're going to take our plank of wood and we're going to feed that through the machine and then would we'll reset the X0, Y0 so that it is here and then would we'll run the third tile. So we'll go to tile three and then we'll go ahead and preview all of the toolpaths there. And then we'd have a part where everything uh, has now been machined and we have a full part that has essentially been broken up into three different tiles. Now this would also work for separate pieces also. So if we only had 24 inch pieces in length, you'd run the first tile toolpath, remove the material and replace with the second blank tile and to run the second tile toolpath and then repeat the process for the third. It's worth pointing out that the 3D view doesn't really show us a realistic view of how the part is going to be machined in a 24 by 9 inch tile. We just switch on our toolpaths and then if we go to tile one we can see that our x0 y0 origin is in the lower left hand corner and then if we change tiles to the second tile it's still at that same place so the origin remains the same and that's because we have an option within our tiling manager uh, to draw toolpaths in the original position for visualization and like it says, this is purely for visualisation purposes only to show you the toolpaths that you're creating for a particular tile as part of the whole job. So let's just deselect this option here. We're going to go ahead and reset our preview. Okay, so you'll see now that we're presented with a 24 by 9 inch tile to visualise the toolpaths per tile so that we can get a good idea of how our individual tiles will look when we cut them out. Or if we're feeding it through like we are in our example, this is how the section will look. So if we jump over to the first tile, so tile one, and if we just reset the preview, and then if we just go ahead and just run the toolpath for the finish, you'll see that it's just doing that section or that tile only. And then we can switch over to tile two. And again, we can preview uh, the toolpath just for the finished toolpath there. And again, it will just create uh, the toolpath just for that particular tile. Now, if we just go to view and use the option to draw our origin, you can see we've got the origin here in the lower left hand corner. And it's important to note that with the draw toolpaths in original position for visualization switched on, uh, it doesn't actually affect uh, the X0, Y0 position of the tiles and the toolpaths that we actually save out. X0, Y0 will always be where we set it in the material setup and will be the same for each individual tile. Another option within the Toolpath Tiling Manager is the Tile Overlap. And this allows us to overlap toolpaths into the next tile by an amount that we specify. 
The reason for applying an overlap would be that you may be using special shape tools which use all or part of the diameter of the tool where you may need to overcut to get the required effect from that tool. So we may need to overcut slightly to accomplish this. We may also want to run a profile pass to cut the whole thing out and so we we'll need to ensure that we have perfectly cut lines. So if we are using individual pieces to cut this out we can ensure that they fit perfectly when we come to piece them together. In our situation 24 inches is our maximum area. So in this situation we would have to be cutting material smaller than our workable area or we may do damage to our machine. To demonstrate this, we're going to add in a tile overlap of a half an inch and then we'll use the option here to update the tiles. So if we make the toolpath visible and if we just zoom in on the 3D view, we can see that our toolpath extends past um, the tile itself and it's extending by the half inch that was specified. Also in the 2D view you can also see this red shaded area also represents uh, that um, overlap that we've put in there. So we're just going to change this back to zero and we'll use the option here to update the tiles. So now we can look at how we can save out our tiled toolpaths. So let's just close out of the toolpath preview form and we're going to go in and use the save toolpath option. So the only thing that's different here when we save our toolpaths out is that we have the option to output tiled toolpaths and that will automatically be checked if your toolpath tiling manager is open and we've assigned the tiles. Okay, so we simply select a post processor, we're going to select the correct toolpath, so we'll take the 3D roughen toolpath and we'll go ahead and save that toolpath. Give that a name and save it out. And then if we just go into save toolpath again, just to take a look at what the software has created. Okay, so the software has condensed the 3D roughen uh, all into one file and then it's divided that toolpath up into three segments, one for each of the tiles. So we have tile one roughen, tile two roughen and tile three roughen. Okay, and so for each toolpath we save out, we're actually going to get three toolpaths. So let's cancel out uncheck that, we'll check the 3D finish option, use the save toolpath option, uh, we'll name that 3D finish, press save, so we're saving one toolpath, but if we go into that folder where we save the toolpath, you'll see the software has created um, a finished toolpath for tile one, for tile two, and for tile three. So let's just cancel out there. So that completes this example on using the feed through options within the toolpath tiling manager. Now if you'd like to find out how the individual tile options work, there is another tiling tutorial that you can find in the related videos section for this tutorial in the tutorial browser. So let's go ahead and save this file. So go to file, save as, and then we'll just name this one 3D tiling, 3D toolpaths, and you can access that from the project folder.